Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Watch What's Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yale Bras. Ding. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? I'm good, babe. I'm good and great. Okay. Good. Because the Lord has risen. It is the day after Easter, everybody. So happy yeah. Easter to those who celebrate. And you know what? To those who don't celebrate, still happy Easter because bless chocolate. Am I bless right? chocolate. Yeah. A holiday based around of chocolate versions of things. I think we can all get down for that. Um, yeah. And if you can't, I don't care. You can get down for our European tour, which is coming up. We're going to be doing that at. Uh, in May, and also we're going to be in Los Angeles in May for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. We're just doing it. I mean, it sounds uh, like huge. Just kidding. It sounds uh, scary because it's a comedy festival, but it's just an intimate little show with y'all. So just come see it, and um, you can get tickets for all that good stuff. The uh, European tour is London, Dublin, and Birmingham, and you can get tickets for that at watchwhatcrappens.com. And also, this is on video. You can get videos of all of our recaps, Patreon or YouTube. YouTube a week later, but go to Patreon. And also, that's where our bonus episodes are. This week, our bonus episode should be, things are always subject to change on this show, but it should be House of the Dragon preview because we recapped that show on our other show winter is crappening so, so excited then what say you today on this fine april the first well first i want to say i'm very excited to find out what is happening with aegon and aegon and aragon and ogalon and agalon and bugalon on house of the dragon <laughs> can't wait i totally remember what happened last season <laughs> i know because um, we have all the aegons on this show <laughs> and that's coming back around the same time as jersey where we have all the joes so perfect it's just gonna be <laughs> that time of year where shows come back where all the guys are named the same thing it's it'll be a it'll be a lot of dragons on our screen that's for sure um so uh what's going on with me i'm happy i'm back in la had a really fun time uh over in new york and i have to say there was a little bit of an easter miracle last night which is that we had in my view a great episode of Potomac. I thought the first part of this reunion was hilarious. I was cracking up. I felt like it was so good. It was a good reminder of how good this cast is after such a miserable season. And I was happy. I'm, I'm happy that this season looks like it's going to end on a on a high note. Did you like it? Did you like the reunion? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I always like seeing these ladies. And I feel like they're, they're, it's a very good reunion cast in general because they're all pretty good at arguing and fussing about, yeah. you know, which I liked. Uh, Candace has already quit the show. I guess I guess she quit. That's the story everybody's Candace, sticking to. Yep. So it seems mm -hmm. like she quit and wasn't fired. Um, so she's out. And so I think there's going to – and the rumor is that Robin's out. So there's going to be – big changes and so i found it sad that they're all in black because yeah <laughs> it's very funeral-y for the cast that once was you know it's like their last year and so this is the final con the final time we're going to see this configuration now not the final time because we get a month of this shit. i can't believe they're doing a three-parter for this but yeah um that was kind of sad but you know it was overall it was overall pretty good a pretty amazing that they can get me riled up over the same old arguments that they've been having for three or four years mm -hmm. but they can i was they right. can they definitely can but yeah this will be the this i had the same thought everyone dressed in black it was sort of like mourning you know the a, a flop season it's like okay we had our first flop season our true first flop season and now we have to mourn it so um, I thought it was pretty impressive that Karen actually came dressed as the fence. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> like an aluminum fence. <laughs> she never specified the kind of fence. She sort of looked like she was popping up from behind a tombstone, too. Like there was like an element. <laughs> of, you know, it's like this big I thought, gray I thought slab. She looked like the nosy neighbor, you know, just popping up behind the fence. It's like, wow, she really she really is the fence. Like, mm, hello. Mm. And I'm, it's like, did, and, <laughs> oh, and Karen's lip work was amazing. Just her like lips constantly moving. She was mm -hmm. like, did they just put in a new size of veneers in there? She was, she was definitely getting used to whatever's in her mouth. Like her, her, <laughs> her lips were going in so many different directions at once while being closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
She was trying to get one very long piece of spaghetti into her mouth. She was trying to get her teeth to stay glued to whatever. I mean, whatever. There were 20 different things going on in her mouth. And it, it was, was like amazing. It was like someone had tied a string around both of her lips and then was like pulling it from different directions. <laughs> like the, Her lips had been lassoed. By the way, okay, this is totally off topic. But I did something very strange this weekend, which is I watched an episode of The Amazing Race for the first time in years because I used to love The Amazing Race. And there was like a lasso challenge. It's still on. And I'm like, this show is hilarious. It's gotten to the point where they're like half the people they've cast are just like gay and they just have gay (laughs) gay meltdowns or they just have like it's just like very, very funny. And I have to say, um, I think I may start to get back into The Amazing Race because um representation for gays matters to me and if there's going to be a show with lots of gay meltdowns i think i'm going to be there for it uh, i have this show i'm That's subject true. to enough gay meltdowns <laughs> anyway that was totally off topic own? that was totally off topic and for no good reason so um back to this show yeah karen um karen's face work she her lip work was, was outstanding um and uh I actually, by the way, I also really enjoyed this set. It was like a '80s throwback or early '90s throwback, right? It almost looked like a late night talk show. Was it their hotel? Was it supposed to be their hotel? Did they ever say what it was? I was like, "Is this a hotel in the DR?" No, it was. No, it wasn't because it was really bright. They had a lot of bright moments. It was just bizarre because it was a really bright set, but then they were all in black. Oh. Right. It was like a gallery of their photos, um, but like. Yeah, it was like bright. Oh, it was and the gallery of their photos, right, right? So it was sort of like art gallery-ish, but kind of like 90s art gallery. Or well, it was 80s. kind of funny that they were all dressed as their icons from that magazine shoot. But since Neko wasn't there, she was the icon, Karen, the grand dame. Because yes. she, she had her crown. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. And Karen had this, uh, she was sort of doing um, a silvery, a short silvery haircut, which looked great. Um, she looked I love that. Andy loved it too. He's like, I love that. But um, you know, everyone looked great. Except, you know, by the way, I did have a comment about Mia. Mia was wearing a dress that had like a sheer strap over her shoulder, but the seam for the strap was on the front instead of the back. So the entire reunion, it looked like she had this big scar across her arm. Did you notice that? That was. Oh, I that- just pulled up a picture of me. Make it, oh, of course, I have I to hate say Google images when it's like this huge picture and then you click it and it's tiny and then it's covered with ads. OK, now yeah. how am I going to find this? Or maybe it was supposed to be maybe that scene was supposed to be on top of the shoulder. But because it was hanging forward, it, it just looked very bad. So for anyone who saw that, I'm just here to say. I see I you. back you. I see you and I back you. <sighs> Oh God, this one, damn it, I keep clicking on it. Now it took me to a video on Kempire, who I love. Hi, Kempire. Hi, but, Kempire. Um, I don't want to watch your video right this moment because we're making one ourselves. Okay, so Mia, yeah, Mia has like a lingerie kind of cutout dress with, is it a giant bow on one shoulder? There's like a big thing on one shoulder, but then there's like a sheer, there's a sheer element that goes over another shoulder. And, um, you know, I just... I, I thought the well, we, the placement of that seam made it look very cheap. Yeah, the sheer material in the dresses I don't love because it's it always reminds me of an ice skating dress. Yeah. Um, but here we are, and there is no <laughs> really ice glad, skating. I'm really glad I got that out of my system. I was like, ugh, how many more hours do I have to wait before I point out the visible seam in Mia's <laughs> sheer strap? <laughs> Setting your alarm early. <laughs> Okay, so everybody starts in. arriving, and um, Giselle's like, who is sitting in the main chair, Andy? Yeah. And he's like, oh, Karen. And she goes, oh, okay, that'll be good. Nah. And then he's like, you guys can kiki. Won't that be yeah. fun? And Giselle is not in first chair, which is a shame because she has done so much nothing this year. I know. Um, really thought that uh, crying because her daughter went to college was going to get her somewhere, but... um unfortunately it didn't oh by the way guess what i get to do this week i get to take my niece to learn to drive so i'm gonna have my own housewife storyline are you scared to drive is it gonna be your car or Uh your sister's car mine wow are you okay are you ready are you gonna film it yeah i'll probably film it yeah i've got to have my housewife scene it's my moment 
I just what? told her if she wrecks it, wreck it really hard so it can be totaled because I don't want a fixed car. I don't want that shit showing up on my car facts. I was like, here's one thing you need to learn as an adult. When you wreck it, total it because otherwise that shit's just on your car facts. It devalues your car and it's like a blight. Every time you go <laughs> sell your car, they're going to be like, let me look up your car facts. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I might know, wind just... up in a coma, but at least I won't have a terrible Carfax. <laughs> <laughs> my Carfax will be good. And you know what? Look, here's my promise. If you don't fuck up my Carfax, if you do get into a coma because you wreck too hard, I'll get you a new face or something while you're under. <laughs> this is perfect. Um, well, good luck. Good luck to you and your niece. Thanks. Be... Okay, so Giselle's um, terrible storyline. Yeah, so she doesn't get the first chair. Uh, Mia does. And so I'm super impressed because I love when the first chair people suddenly become mother hens and start giving everyone advice because that's what mm -hmm. they do every year. And so I'm interested to see what Mia's advice to everybody is. Yeah. Um, so everyone's showing up and Candace is annoyed because there's only like two people out there. And she's like, why was I rushed? Because literally no one else is here. <laughs> and um, so they're just gathering, etc. So they all sit down, a lot of kisses. And it's like, I love the Mariah photo, Robin. Ha, I love it. She's like, you do? Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually felt for Candace when she was out there and nobody else was there because I think it shows a lot of how Candace feels in this cast, which is the new person. Even though she's been here for six years or whatever, I think she still feels. Wait, has she been here six years? What season? Six is years, this? six seasons. She started so, season three, I think. Yeah, I feel like she still feels new and they don't accept her as an OG. Well, she's not an OG, but you know what I mean. I think right. she still feels new because we all know the new person is always the first person to show up. Remember how uh, Sonia Ross Richards was always a <laughs> Richard Ross was oh, always yeah. the first person to show up. It's just how you are when you're new. You're the first person everywhere, and I think she's still got that insecurity. Yeah. Uh, well, she's definitely got that. She she definitely has that insecurity. She is someone who does not want to show up at the party first, and there's no one there. She wants to make a special entrance. She wants to be the princess that she is, and. Um, she, uh, someone probably tricked her because she probably runs late. I mean, I feel like Candace and Lisa Hochstein have a lot of similarities in that regard. And, uh, like Lisa Hochstein would be also similarly horrified if she was out there and she was like the third person on the set. Well, that would never happen. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, it would never happen. Of course, Candace is a lot more, um, driven than Lisa Hochstein. Although Lisa Hochstein probably is driven too, but literally in a car. But, um, <laughs> Candace is driven. She has a song with drive in the title. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's 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 part of her brand. Okay, so everybody comes to set and um they're getting their last minute touch-ups, etc. Welcome, I'm Eddie Cullen, and this is inexplicably a three-part reunion. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. So hello, Grindam. Hi, Giselle. Hi, Karen. Hi, NECA. Hi, Mia. Hi, <laughs> Ashley. Hi, sound person. Hi, craft services. Hi, costume lady. Hi, Ben. That's my son. I'm a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John Hill. He's on my radio show. So, um, yeah, Andy's like, hey, Robin, so you opened up your skincare franchise yet? <laughs> I just want to troll you for the first of many on this episode. Ha, <laughs> slow person. I mean, slow opening a business person. Let me clarify so I don't sound problematic. <laughs> Anyone here get a discounting membership to your Glow 360? And she's like, oh, sure, Andy. So she hasn't opened Glow yet. Um, I have a bad feeling about Glow. Do you? What do you? What do you feel? I feel like this is a bad time to get fired because you need you need to be on the show for people to come to your Glow. I think I do not. I'm not optimistic about Glow 360. I'm wondering if maybe 360 is just not something I like in a brand. Speaking of Lisa Hochstein, between Aroma 360 and Glow 360. Maybe it's just not. Are they? Do you think they are they connected? Do you think Aroma Three Hundred and Sixty and Glow, or is that just coincidence? Oh, maybe we should look it up. But I'm too tired. My fingers. I'm hurt. too tired. I'm already bored with my question. 
Let's talk about the amazing race. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if they're connected. I do know that 360 means all the way around, right? And that's not how I want to think of when I go to get a facial. I don't want to think of like, oh, full circle, because full, full circle means you're old and dead, right? You come in as a baby, you leave as a baby, an old wrinkly <laughs> thing. And I don't want to be 360. I want to be like 180, just like want to have a glow, glow 180. 180, you know? You're the opposite of what you look like now. I think that's probably the stronger point, right? Because if it's 360 means that like you, like we're going to do a 180 on your face, take it from being like greasy and full of yeah. smudge and sludge in your pores to yeah. beautiful and shiny. You've done a 180, but doing a 360 is like, and we've returned you to your grimy state. Congratulations. That'll be $400. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so um, Andy's like, so Nika, welcome to your first reunion. How was your first season? Rate it. And she's like, um, uh, 10 out of 10, Andy. 10 out of 10. It was definitely, definitely, definitely 10 out of 10. She's like, please let me come back. <laughs> it was honestly a 2 out of 10, but I'll say 10 out of 10 if you let me come back. Please, please, please. <laughs> I'm going to say this. My prediction is they are going to bring Nika back, and they shouldn't bring Nika back. They shouldn't. But they are. Also, I think they are because this is the network that does not learn their lesson, as evidenced by the announcement of Real Housewives of New York coming back with everybody in the original cast and not making yes. Jenna show her original life, her life in the fucking show. Can you? We'll talk about that tonight. I'm about to say that's a crappy hour. hour topic right there. That's but still, you want to talk about a network that does not learn their goddamn lesson. Really? You renewed New York exactly as is? Exactly oh, as is. Unbelievable. God. Unbelievable. <laughs> And then they did that promo. Oh, we'll talk about it on Crappy Hour because that promo annoyed me too. I really I annoyed see me. the promo. I guess I'll watch it before. Then. It's there. It's there. Like, what, what, what are you talking about? Huh? What's going on? I need a, <laughs> I need a promo reckoning. Okay. Drama. Okay. Just want, I just want the preview to be Sai. I saw a preview with Sai just chewing because that's her thing. She's like, I eat. My name is Sai. So I eat. <laughs> and I was like, wow, Sai is even sticking with her eating storyline. I just wanted to be her going, girl math, but then explaining it wrong. <laughs> girl, math. girl math is like two plus Forgot two about four. That. Girl math. Oh, I'm bracing. Okay, so Andy's like, all right, well, Mama Mia, you've been to talk about, a lot of talk about you tonight. You've been breaking the internet left and right. I'm like, she has literally not broken anything on the internet. Smart. Like, I looked, I looked, and actually, I, I brought in an inspector, and actually, the foundation's great, and uh, they, he said, this, actually, this internet's built very well. Nothing is broken. <laughs> Completely stable internet. I have never <laughs> seen the internet less surprised. Less than yeah. by the, <laughs> by like, the literally, line. like nothing, nothing even, there was not even like a, a like a small cosmetic crack. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, your new DJ boyfriend, you're still married, right? And I know Gordon will be out here later. Oh, hi, Ken. It's great to see you. And she's like, ah! okay, <laughs> so you've been working on some new music, right? Uh, how much has your mom spent? Tell us the truth. Tell us the truth. <laughs> Uh, and then he asks if she, uh, or her plans of being a mom are being pushed again. And she goes, um, maybe no. And Nick is like, that's a yes. <laughs> so he's like, Wendy, hi, did you hit a little bit of the devil's lettuce, Satan's spinach, Beelzebub, Swiss chard, <laughs> happy Eddie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's like. No, I didn't have any Happy Eddie, Andy, but he did promise afterwards we'll do a little celebratory devil's lettuce. <laughs> All right. I love I love a devil's lettuce. Okay. Hi, Ashley. Any forest news yet? And she's like, oh, well, um, yes, there is. There is some movement. I, uh, I'm not divorced, but um, there's been some movement. I left a voicemail for Michael, so we're going in the right direction. <laughs> Okay, well, every year I used to ask Robin, when's the wedding? And now I ask you, when's the divorce? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I feel that, Auntie. I deserve that. And Mia says, I'll be divorced first. So, um, okay, so there's a lot to unravel. So here comes Daddy Andy, everybody. Daddy Andy is not happy. He's like, guys, <laughs> the point of Real Housewives is for everybody to get along. <laughs> and I don't like I don't like all these ladies fighting, guys. Now listen, ladies fighting, you have built me a mansion in five different states. 
and money for my children to live off of forever. But please, all of a sudden, come in here and be nice, okay? Daddy don't <laughs> like fighting ladies, all right? All right. Now look under your chair. You've all been given a set of gloves. All right, let's get this shit started. He wants to call each other a bitch first. I want to set an intention for today that as a group, you all will reach out to one of your gay friends and have them send me a nude. Thank you very much. <laughs> So yeah, he says as a fan, it's extremely frustrating to watch this season because we're supposed to be finding common ground and we're supposed to be taking ownership of our actions as they affect others. So are any of you willing to make up with each other and admit when you're wrong, ladies, anybody? And it's just crickets and everybody's looking at each other and Candace and Wendy are giving each other looks and Robin and Giselle are giving each yeah. other looks. And then Karen, so Andy looks to Karen and so Karen just goes, Andy, I believe in these women, Andy. <laughs> I believe in them, which is why I swallowed a jar of peanut butter whole, Andy, before I came out here. He's like, that, that is not answering the question, man. Yeah. This, by the way, this Andy's little spiel here was his diplomatic way of saying this season sucked because you guys, none of you guys were filming with each other and we all hated it. So you guys have to figure out how to fix this because otherwise you're all in trouble. But he can't say that because he can never say the season sucks because you can't say that on the actual season itself. But that's what he basically was saying to them. And he's like, so are any of you guys willing to like move forward because it's, it's fucking everything up, right? So right. Candace is like, I'm looking forward as well to owning what I need to own and moving forward. Like, now, you know when you say owning what you need to own, you're not just talking about the house that you live in, right? Like, you're not talking about independence from your mother. I was talking about that, Andy, so I rescind the comment. I apologize. I misinterpreted the question. Will your mother own half is my question. Like, Andy, <laughs> I'm really getting sick of this shit. Okay, so anybody else, will you own it? And so everybody says, oh, I mean, okay, except yeah. for Giselle and Robin. So Karen goes, Giselle, Robin, what about you? Hmm? Hmm? Will you be owning? This is a fence calling. Fence calling. Will you be owning it or not? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm looking forward to the ownership. Yeah. And what about you, Robin? Uh, sure. Uh, I guess I'll own something. And by own something, I mean I won't own anything by the end of the episode. So um, now we start with our favorite thing from the season, talking about sex because they had literally had nothing going on in every single scene. It's like, hey guys, here we are in the DR. Nothing's going on. What should we do? Let's play a game. Who likes fisting? Who likes getting fists <laughs> up their butthole? Me, Who I likes do. blowing? I also, Who I likes swallow blowing? cum and sometimes I fuck toes. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay i cannot believe these questions okay question number one why are you televising this piece of shit show right now whoops didn't mean to read that one okay question number two seriously why don't you just show seven good episodes instead of like three good ones and eight bad ones oops didn't mean to read that one okay god these <laughs> questions are wild <laughs> So it's a lot about spitting or swallowing. Who swallows spooge? How do you stay asleep with a spooge in your mouth and then spit it out later, um, et cetera. Mia says that she swallows the DJ's loads now, except she's mad that they're calling her a DJ or calling the guy a DJ because he's a radio personality, okay? And everyone <laughs> starts cracking up. They're like, okay. So yeah. he doesn't have the talent to time records against each other as he fades one out and another in, is what you're telling yeah. me. Yes, Andy, he is less talented than a DJ. Yeah, right. um, he, but he does know how to make a small statement before Miley Cyrus starts singing the lyrics on her song. <laughs> he times it perfectly. Um, so Bruno from New Brunswick says, Karen, why did you have to pause for so long when asked how many sexual partners you've had? And she goes, well, mm, well, I, mm, I had to count the wet dreams, Andy. Didn't I? I had to count the wet dreams because I was, I, I asked if they matter. And when Wendy said to me, well, Karen, you can't have wet dreams. Hmm, hmm, well, I do have wet dreams and I count those wet dreams, Andy. Each one of these pickets on my fence counts as a wet dream. Just want you to know that. So Robin's like, um, in other words, you can't keep track of how many people you've had sex with for the past five years. No, Robin, that would be one. Okay, next, next. Hold on. <laughs> Wet dream incoming. Mm, 
yes, we'll add one to my tally. Uh, that was very good for her. I mean, Robin just can't keep up. How has she been on the show this long? And she goes, oh, oh it's you, not one. <laughs> All right, well, I will say the times that you all start talking about, when you guys talk about sex, your guards all come down. You start laughing. You guys are friends. Why do you guys think that is? And he's like, because we're all a bunch of horny, to <laughs> horny toads. Well, I just uh, I just practiced my swallowing there while I was trying to say that. Sorry about that. Yeah, they're like, we all do it, Andy. We all do it. So then um, Robin, Robin, you've been raked over the coals for hiding details about your marriage. And even though you made it clear that you don't care, I don't care <laughs> about the never ending wand rumors, your ex-friend Candace wouldn't let you off the hook that easy. Let's watch the wand cheating montage, not to be confused with last year's Juan cheating montage, or the years <laughs> before his Juan cheating montage, or the year before his Juan just hates Robin in general, but isn't accused of cheating this year, <laughs> or the year before his Juan might be cheating with Michael montage. Okay, there's a lot of them. Wow. All right, roll it. So we get uh, Juan's greatest hits from the season, all the th everything, everything, and we come back, and Andy's like, all right, so did Juan watch back any of this season? No, he did not, Andy. All right, well, just to be clear, you still stand by the fact that Juan never cheated on you with the Canada girl or Coach Bree or anyone else, like maybe the person who works at Subway, maybe the person he's with right now. I don't know. Like, so you never cheated on anyone since you got back together. Well, I can't say anything for certain, Andy, because, like, no one can say anything for certain. Am I right? <laughs> no, thanks, If Robin. a tree falls in the woods, but there's no one to see the woods, are there woods? I mean, Juan is basically Schrodinger's cat. Am I right? <laughs> is it alive or is it dead? I don't know. And I don't care. But basically... <laughs> if Juan's penis is in a box and someone rings a bell, does the penis fuck a person? <laughs> okay, you're getting. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Two things cannot be true. You either have the cake or you don't. But we can never know what it's like to do both. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things I saw, I think Bravo put it out, it was like one of the Bravo tweets. I'm like, finally, Robin is asked questions about her relationship with Juan and answers none of them. Okay, again. So uh, everyone's like, does anybody believe Juan? And Mia's like, no, nobody believes Juan's story. And Karen's like, Andy, I don't think for it's any of us to believe. Hmm, none of us believe it, but Robin believes it. And that's all that matters, Andy. That's all that matters. Now, hold on. Let me give a little scratch. Let me give a one finger scratch to the top of my wig and then a nice solid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very close to dislodging the tiny peanut that's in between my back teeth. Hold on. At one point, she literally took her fingers and like yes, put her like pushed her teeth. It back was in. girl, it, get them screwed exactly. In. Yeah, girl, it's called polydent. Come on. No, not so, polydent. Where they screw them in, where you get them anchored into your into the bones of your mouth. Know, but, like what is that but, called? Implant, like implanting, whatever. but like for, yeah. if they're loose at the reunion, just put some polydent or something. Get some yeah. rubber bands. Get some scotch tape or whatever, girl. Or like just come without it. Like a, you know what? I'm I'm ready for people to just be like, you know what? I don't have teeth anymore. Who fucking needs them? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Karen is like, yeah. Karen says, you know, all that matters is that Robin believes it. You know, it's like a child at Christmas with Santa Claus. Am I right? And everyone's like, yeah, Robin believes it. That's all that matters. <laughs> Like, what holiday wish? This is like a holiday special. Like, if you believe it, then it's real. I know. It's like, is anybody going to clap for Tinkerbell? You know, Tinkerbell being the <laughs> ones. You <know>. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Juan's stability in this marriage. Or fidelity, I guess I should say. So, um... And just, I was like, can I ask one thing? When he said that Bree's like a beautiful woman, did that bother you at all, Robin? And she's like, no, because the point was if he had been at the laundromat with someone ugly, it wouldn't have been an issue with anybody. <laughs> just I was like, got it. 
Stop. Look at me no. being a, asking the tough questions there. Now everyone on Twitter can get off my ass. Thank you. And yes, I do like getting fucked up the ass. Uh, can we go back to that season? Can we go back to that question, Andy? Swallowing loads. Robin? <laughs> loads of laundry, yeah. So Andy is like, well, do, do you feel like he was supportive of you throughout filming? And he's like, yeah, he showed up. He answered lots of questions. He was so, so supportive. And he's like, yeah, but he's not here tonight. I mean, he doesn't have a basketball game. Everyone was like, oh, Andy. <laughs> He's and like, well said, Andy. Mm. And Robin goes, well, he doesn't have a basketball game. That's true. He declined to be here. Um, you know, but that doesn't mean he doesn't support me. It's just, you know, like he does at home from a different apartment. He supports me. It's just nowhere near me. He supports being away. It doesn't mean he doesn't support me. It just means that a washer opened up at the end of aisle three. He's got to claim it. <laughs> And so Karen's like, why is he not here? And when he goes, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't know, he doesn't know that you're going to be under fire tonight because of his actions. The least he could do as your husband is to stand up behind you and say, baby, you don't have to take these bullets. I can take some bullets for you. I can take them for you. That is what men do. And Robin's like, I don't need that. I'm fine with that. I don't care. But I think Wendy's right. Like, Robin's gonna take all this shit for Juan, and he's not even gonna show up. He's gonna make force her to look stupid, and then pr ultimately get fired from the show, partially, f you know, because of that. So uh, Andy is like, "Well, Ashley, okay, you're in a similar position. You're married or are married to uh, a horny golem. So what's going on? What Michael didn't want to come to reunions? And she's like, correct. He didn't want to be under fire. Um, he didn't want to have all these questions and allegations towards him. But then when I told him it would be the same cameraman working here, he was like, be there in a jiffy. So, you know, it worked out. <laughs> I told him they replaced the cameraman uh, with somebody who does more squats. And he was here in a second, Andy. <laughs> He's been doing actual uh, hand exercise. He's been using a squeeze ball, Andy, to strengthen his hands. <laughs> And Andy, uh, Andy's like, wow. So um, Wendy's like, yeah, because that's what husbands are supposed to do. That's what, no, they're not. You know, Wendy has this thing where one minute she's like, how dare you talk about the husband? That is disgusting that anybody would talk about marriage as the family. I have children. But then when it's someone else's marriage with children, she's like, get him here so we can rake his ass over the coals, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, I think Robin is an ass for not sharing her story. I can't even believe she was brought back when she proved last season she wasn't going to share any of her story by trying to get people to go pay for it on Patreon. But they did bring her back. She's still not going to share her story. Frankly, let me tell you, her story's boring, okay? Here's her right. story. We all know the story. It's just unspoken on the show. Robin and Juan don't like each other. They probably have an open relationship. They keep it together for the kids. He goes out and fucks people, probably very quietly, because his name is Juan, and he doesn't talk much. That's it. Right. I mean, what yeah. more do we need from the guy? Exactly. Um, I think that they, they must have brought her back because they thought that maybe they would get more of the story and they didn't. And they're like, OK, this is a mistake. But I don't know why she wasn't demoted just friend of, you know, at that point. And I have to give it to Robin, even though I really don't like to. Um, Robin tried. She did try this season. She kept bringing Juan on and she kept trying to have these conversations <laughs> with Juan to the point where he was yelling at her, being like, drop it. You know, like he was over it. But she did try, you know, it just wasn't successful. But she did try to have all these conversations with him. And he was like, no. Yeah. So Andy's like, well, we got a lot of feedback about how you don't think it's suspicious that Juan deletes his DMs and messages. Yeah, I mean, he has this weird thing with his phone being cluttered. He hates when his mistresses write all this stuff to him, so he just wants to erase it. Yeah. So, do you have the password to his phone? No, and he doesn't have the password to my phone. <laughs> yeah, wow. but you're not the one stepping out on the marriage. Yeah, I wouldn't have the password to your phone because you're boring, but I would have the password to his phone because <laughs> you want to see where the dick pics are pointing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No one wants to look at Robin's phone. Like no one really cares about looking at photos of the embellish inventory. But Juan's, on the other hand, definitely some hotter stuff in there. Why haven't we heard about embellish this season or have we? <laughs> strange because you would think that the hottest fashion brand uh, in the Potomac area would be top of mind for all of us, but I guess we just forgot about it. She's been spending the whole season doing it. Okay, embellish hats. Let me see. 
embellished. Set that should really merge fashion with caps it. by Robin Dixon. Let me see. Well, she's still got her website. I can say 15%. Oh, no. You know what? I know what this is. It says sign up with your email and save 15%. And then you put in your email and then it goes, okay, you're almost there. Now give us your phone number and you'll save 15%. I hate that uh -uh. they do that now. I'm not giving you my damn phone number, okay? Um, I still don't understand why she named her hat embellish. Like I really am like, <laughs> given, uh, Given that, like, with Juan's history of lying, I just don't think you should name your brand embellished. Well, but that's like, why she named it that, because she's had to get so comfortable with lying that, so comfortable with lies that she was like, oh, lies are comfortable. Oh, comfort, hats, embellish. So then Andy asks everyone, like, does everyone have doubts? Does anyone have doubts? And Candace was like, well, for me, the issue was never whether or not Juan was cheating. My issue was you kept information about your marriage from the group and demanded that the group share our personal lives. And Rob's like, can you clarify what I demanded? Anything? Yes, the example that comes to mind immediately is in Mexico last year when you accused Karen of not being truthful about whatever was going on in her life. And Karen goes, it defies me defied I think she meant to say it defiled me but she goes it defied me <laughs> it defied me <laughs> so then we see a flashback of that and uh Robin's saying what you should care about Karen is people sending us actual pictures of you with a blue-eyed man in Vegas and uh, Robin's like yeah but that was after she talked about Juan holding hands in Georgetown yeah but Robin there was the blue eyes thing there this wasn't the first time okay? yeah and um, she's like, you know, I don't get it because uh, that wasn't going on in my marriage when we were filming that season. But it was because mm -hmm. Karen was bringing up those rumors during the season. So that was going on. I don't know. She's full of it. Right. And then tell the truth. Right. And Karen and Candace rightfully call out Robin for having enough of a story that she sold it behind Patreon. Right. So uh, Andy's like, OK, OK. Now, don't you think that if you'd just gotten ahead of it, Robin, and you just said, you know, Juan and I had a blip about a year ago that lasted our entire relationship. It actually started when we first met and continues until this moment, a big blip. Don't you think, like, you know, it would have helped a lot your, yourself a lot in this situation? She's like, oh, um, well, I wasn't thinking about getting ahead of a story. And he goes, um, well, you said that you thought you, you said you thought that someone else was going to bring it up. And then we see a clip of her saying, I was just waiting for Karen to bring it up. That's why I didn't bring it up, because I knew they were going to try and use it against me. And uh, so Robin's like, well, I mean, I didn't mean I was waiting for her, but I wouldn't be surprised if she'd... Oh, Robin, just answer a fucking question truthfully. Just one. Like, this is an easy one. Just say, yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have been more forthcoming. Um, you know, I didn't think I, didn't think I had to because it, there was no reason to just blurt it out. But in retrospect... You know, I see that like I should have, especially by the way, also, because let's not forget that uh, prior to the whole talk about um, Karen, there was all the stuff about Wendy and Eddie, right? Like that's why Wendy and Robin are not friends because Giselle and, and Robin were like, hey, Wendy, we hear stories that Eddie has been like flirting with women or cheating on you. So and like the only discussions- reason you got all this plastic surgery is because of those uh, rumors that Eddie's cheating on you. Right. So you've definitely talked about other people's cheating, which I th or or personal lives like that, which I think is fine. But then you all of a sudden are like, oh, why would I bring up that we had a blip or why would I mention this or whatever? You know, I mean, the answer is easy. Would you want to talk about your husband cheating? <laughs> OK, if my husband was cheating and nobody knew, why would I tell them so that they can attack me with the fact that my husband is cheating? And if my right. husband is cheating, I don't really care. I've I've swallowed Juan's load for this long. Why stop now? You yeah, know? that would be a good response. Yeah, like just just say it. But she just keeps lying over and over again and then acting like she never lied. You know, it's just annoying. And I can see why your ass is getting fired. And it should have happened seasons ago. So then Karen's like, well, perfect example. When Raymond went through his taxes, you know, I put a little humor on it and I did my press conference without press. Without press, and that was a classic. Let's go back, doodly do, doodly do, doodly do, -de do, <laughs> and see the past of Karen handling this situation with some grace, shall we? Taxes, <laughs> press conference with no press. <laughs> I got ahead of my story and I also added a mond to Ray just to show how serious I was about getting ahead of the story. 
And was, well, that was a public situation. And Giselle's like, it was in the paper, Karen. Uh, it was in the Washington Post. Uh, like, yeah, yours was on the paper. The credit card paper. <laughs> I think the Circulation credit card one. paper is more important than the Washington Post. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right. So, bleep. all of a sudden we get someone bleeped out on Twitter. Did someone write in a question and then yes. say, actually, I do not approve of you using my name well, on they this don't show? Want to give, they don't want to give attention to the blogger because this is the one that comes oh, from the blogger. Yeah. Um, what did I want to say about that? But also, yours was a public situation too, Robin. That's how everybody knew about it. It was in the blogs, okay? Yeah. It wasn't some private thing that people had you followed around by one of Mary Soul's private investigators, okay? It was it was in the paper. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't in the paper, but it was in the closest thing we have, the blogs. Okay, so Bleep on Twitter said, according to the fans. And I guess Candace, via her fans, she's mad at Robin didn't. Uh, she's mad that Robin didn't share something personal that happened to her and Juan on the show. Yet she was the one who said back in season three that her and Chris have the right to choose what they share on the show. Whatever and blogger, that's true. by the way, by the way, amazing memory on this blogger. This person did their research. How do you even remember? I don't remember anything that said three episodes ago, let alone what was said on season three. Well, this is a blogger friend of Robin's who is doing Robin's dirty work, which is why they know exactly what Robin wants to, <laughs> what Robin wants to get across on the show. So this is true, by the way. This is a decent point. But that was season three, and like at some point, we have to like give it a break. Like, can but we I just the... keep it to the last couple of seasons? Like, but also, like, let's not forget it's. Everyone has a right to decide what they want to put out there publicly. Like, you know, people are allowed to have. You know, some privacy at this very difficult time for me and my family and Mauricio and the, and the daughters. But um, at the By same the time... By the way, save a little ride a cowgirl. Am I right? <laughs> Crappy hour. But um, I think what... Uh, I think the issue here is not like debating the right to choose what is on and off the show. I think it's that Robin has been someone who has pried into these difficult situations for Wendy and for um, Karen and others about like, what's really going on when she herself has a skeleton in the closet and then when it is unearthed and, and she's confronted with it, she suddenly acts like, well, that's private. I don't have to talk about this. Like she doesn't, and she doesn't do the answer that you gave, which is what she could have said is like, you know what? Of course I wasn't gonna say anything because you guys didn't know about it. And I didn't want you guys to go in on me about it. So. I was right. trying to avoid that shit. Right. As was the question to Kyle. It was the same thing. It wasn't, why don't you want to talk about the cheating? It was, why are you such a fucking hypocrite? That's the yeah. question. Unless you're a so, podcaster, you don't get to be one. <laughs> so Candace is like, well, I will not be answering questions from her friend who is a blogger. You shared proprietary information with him about me. <laughs> Proprietary. Proprietary, <laughs> really? It's like Robin the has Big a Mac here. sauce that Robin shared. <laughs> it's all the, the KFC seasonings. Like, how dare you? <laughs> she shared all the notes to drive back. I can't believe it. <laughs> No one knew it was a it was an amended kickball change that I used in the opening of Drive Back until you told me. Uh, this is so ridiculous too. I love it. She's so dramatic. Like every question, she's like, oh. and as the most tortured, abused person in this cast, Andy, I have to answer. Please end me. Hand me a Kleenex, Andy. So, she definitely um, sidestepped that one. And then so, yeah, so Candace is like, you have, you have shared these proprietary secrets and hold on, let me find it. So of course, Candace, Candace has decided to one up the, uh, the receipt game on reunions. We had, of course, Monique's binder and we've had some other big ones, but this one, Candace has poster board demonstrations. She pulls out a full on like, like. 22 by 31 inch sheet with the receipts on it and her mom really paid for the nice ones because it was the, yeah it was the thick styrofoam that it was like she really got the nice core. ones for this yeah i felt bad for her because you know going into this we know this is candace's last reunion and she tried to pull a monique and monique just did it so much better 
I mean, this yeah. was so sad. Like these props were completely ignored the whole time. People were just like, oh God, a prop. Nah, boo. And he's just like, boo. Yeah. You suck. Go home. <laughs> yeah, it was way too big. So, um, so she pulls out her receipt and everything, and she's like, I was going to bring an easel, but that would have been too much. So <laughs> anyway, now that you've back. Thank you. Unfortunately, I was gonna bring my easel, but that was a proprietary secret that was stolen from me. So also, Candace, your poster board can't be bigger than you. I mean, <laughs> they have her reach behind and then she <laughs> she looks like an ant trying to carry, you know, like a giant sandwich or something. It's humongous, it's too heavy for her. <laughs> Like covering her whole face. <laughs> um, so she's like, this, you know, this is one. This is one on the east side of town. And this is a map. I'm like, oh, gee. And this is the treasure. Candace, so, I think you've actually just brought out the specials at the local coffee shop. Oh, you know, you're right. I did not mean to. But just so you know, empanadas are $12 today. Okay, let me get the actual poster board. Uh, so she says, you put the video of Juan and Giselle talking in this group chat with two bloggers that I know of. And you said, well, I'm going to post this on Sunday. Does this look like someone who's mad and upset? This shit really pissed me off. So you're pissed at your best friend and you're talking to a blogger about it? Because apparently she was mad. I was not just... following this. I watched it like three times. I was like, wait, what is she trying to prove? I guess she's trying to say that Giselle said on the show that Juan... No, no, that doesn't... Sorry, what was the point of this... I guess what was that, the point that, she was making? That Robin was annoyed. She was talking to these two bloggers and she was talking about how she was pissed off at Giselle at that moment for the talk he had with Juan, I guess on the show or something. Yeah. And um, so she's confronting her saying, and you got caught talking about your best friend to bloggers. Well, but she's talking about Giselle, who's your enemy anyway. So how is this working in your favor? The props don't not work and the seat. story isn't making enough sense to the audience to really yeah. be on your side, I think, with it. Yeah, I actually would have preferred to have seen just a menu from a coffee shop after all. <laughs> so Andy is like, all right, so um, uh, coasters prevent ring stains on tables, says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice. We finally got a PSA in here. Uh, <laughs> Candace, after watching the season back and all the conversations you had with Robin, do you still believe she could inspire with Giselle and Ashley to malign Chris in an effort to protect Juan? And Candace is like, I do. I do believe that. And, and everyone literally boos. It was so funny. They're like, oh, God, give it up already. I just honestly, I hate this for Candace. I think that this is, I think Candace latched onto this for her storyline. Like maybe it could have been like a one or two episode kerfuffle at the top of the season but the fact that this became her season long runner her feud with robin i just feel like it's too weak it's just not i just uh i it just is it's just not her strongest work i and believe I'm like, that robin knew that juan was cheating and that she knew it was going to be coming up on the show because she's on a housewife show and she deserves it frankly she deserves like she deserves the karma of people talking about it, not getting cheated. Nobody deserves to be cheated on, but I'm saying she deserves the karma of it being talked about on the show. She knew all this was coming. So when she heard Giselle spreading rumors about Candace's husband, she was being kind to Candace, knowing that she needed people to be kind to her when her news came out. Which I is believe in that fine, way she was being kind but that's of- that's not conspiring in the but same that's way. Not, that's right. I don't think it was that she sat with Giselle and was like, Giselle, you need to come up with this thing so everybody's concentrating on Chris being creepy and I'll pretend to be innocent in this whole thing. Meanwhile, no, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't think no. Robin thinks I don't that think deep. so. I mean, she doesn't. Have you, and have you seen her business plans for Glow 360? <laughs> Robin doesn't think that deeply. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that, like, I think that the Candace's basis for this was that, like, Robin was, like, not as supportive of her at the reunion as she would have liked. And because all season long, Robin was supportive of Candace. And I just feel like, like, throwing this whole feud like building this whole feud with robin about like how she acted at the reunion essentially it just feels like weak sauce to me it feels like she didn't know what to do for the season so this was what she was going to do she didn't know how to evolve her her feud with giselle it just it's just not it, it just didn't have to me the authentic 
yeah. uh, grounding of, of like the feuds that we really care about. And so I've just found it hard to track the feud. I have found it hard to understand or care about it. And that was one of the problems with the season is that we'd have to sit and watch these scenes with them fighting and trying to reconcile. But I'm like, but what are they really, what are they really fighting about? This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't I work. I think it weakened her argument against Giselle too, because her argument against Giselle is so strong. I mean, I can see why she's pissed at Giselle. I don't blame her at all for that. Giselle's full of shit. She did use language that made it sound like sexual assault-ish language. She did use that, which we, we talked about last season. Uh, and she has every right to be super pissed at Giselle and rail on her. The problem is she's keeping that same energy for Robin and Robin didn't do it. I mean, yeah. no matter, even if Robin liked that Giselle did it, which we have no proof of, Robin didn't do it. So you keeping that same energy for Robin just weakens the other argument because it doesn't make sense with the Robin thing. It's not fair. Now, if her argument against Robin was just like, Robin still supports Giselle and is friends with Giselle, even knowing that Giselle would do something that hurtful to me. So fuck Robin. Okay, that's mm -hmm. enough. That's enough right. for me. But all of this, like she conspired. Meh. I'm with you. It's just, it's not, it's, it's not. I don't think it's ringing true for anyone. And you can see it, the entire cast. Everyone's like, oh, come on. So then and, um, yeah. Giselle's, Giselle's saying, um, Robin's like, look, I told Giselle I was mad at her at that time. So none of this even matters. Like, I don't even know why this is being, being brought up. So then um, J Candace is like, I... I need a tear. I need a, I need a, someone get me something in the shape of a triangle. She's like getting her styrofoam giant yeah. billboard thing to wipe her eyes. <laughs> Just it. And then Andy's like, oh, I actually have a tissue. So Giselle's like, oh God, not the tears. Ah, ha, 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 ha. not the tears. Ah, I guess like, fuck you. These are very real, authentic tears. <laughs> fuck you. So she's like, oh, okay, tears. Ah, tears, tears, tears. Okay, fake tears. Ah. So then Giselle just starts cracking up because of the tears. And Candace is like, fuck you. And Giselle's like, oh, come on, tears, tears, the tears, the tears. Oh, those take fears, those fake tears are coming, aren't they? Ha, 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 ha. So her and Robin are openly mocking uh, Candace. Now, I started laughing because I feel like the whole audience is like, oh, God, here Candace goes with the fucking tears. Candace can't be as tough as she is on Twitter against these people and then That's suddenly the be the most delicate flower that ever graced the earth every time a tiny argument comes up. She has That's to stop why about it. Like, so, that's, why she, that's why she loses all the time because there, she's very hypocritical, you know? She's very like, I'm a victim. Now, that said, Giselle and Robin were fucking mean. If somebody starts crying, you don't just start openly mocking them. You know what I mean? Now, was the audience laughing? A lot of us probably. I looked at Twitter after. Uh, Obviously, not everybody's laughing. People are irate at Giselle and Robin. I started laughing, but I was like, God, that's also like a super dick move. You know, like who does that? I think it's a dick move, but it's also like, again, Ra I mean, Candace is so transparent with like, she's like a soap, a soap star, right? It's like, or a soap actress character, right? Where it's like, so like you're angry at Rob and then, well, what do you need from Robin to move forward? Ah, starting to cry. She's, it's just like, there's an element of manipulation in the way she conjures up tears at exactly the right moment in a way that we should actually love, right? Like it's so campy, it's so arch. But um, like, I can understand, I would laugh too, but they are openly laughing because they're trying to belittle her, uh, which is not nice. But at the same time, you can only pull the cry move so many times before, you know, people on a show who are hostile to you are gonna make fun of you. Yeah, so then um, they just keep going, right? Especially Giselle. She's like, ha ha, tears, LOL, R-O-F-L. Okay, I learned that from my boyfriend, he's youthful. And <laughs> Andy's like, uh, Giselle, that's kind of mean. And Karen's like, yeah, it's not a good look, Giselle, not a good look. <laughs> and Candace goes, she's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, all I need from my friends is like acknowledgement. I just need her to acknowledge that there's a difference because it hurt, not just me, it hurt Chris. Because Chris also considered Robin a friend. Why do I feel like Chris doesn't give a shit? <laughs> Why do he I feel sure like Chris did does last not year. give a shit? He was super pissed last year. At Robin though? Not at Robin. No, not at Robin. I don't think it was at Robin last year. We we haven't heard as much from him this year. I think this year he's like, please leave me off this show as much as possible. Yeah. Um, But look, 
Candace is re Candace in general, I think her reactions or whatever, it's easy to to start judging Candace's reactions. But the fact is what Giselle did was shitty. It was shitty. And and Giselle's in the wrong here, period. And that Giselle won't say anything to take responsibility is bullshit. I have to be team Candace for that. I do think though that Giselle has a right to say, you know, I was in a room with Chris and I was uncomfortable. If I that's don't think all that she said, then that would have been fine. It was after the reunion. He wanted to talk privately. I thought we were going to be private. It wasn't private. It felt super uncomfortable because it felt like a confrontation with a man. He was drunk. Whatever. If it was that, okay. But it wasn't that. It was your husband tricked me into going into a room. Then it was he made me go into a room. He made me room. go in. Then it was he tried to sneaky get sneaky. He was, he was being a sneaky link in all of this shit, insinuating that he was trying to fuck her in this room. I mean, that's when she's visibly uncomfortable and he's trying to make pass at her. That's shitty. That is extremely shitty. And to wait until the cameras are rolling to bring all that stuff up is just shitty. And the fact that she's pretending that it's not is, and that Candace is just overreacting is crazy to me. Like, it's crazy that she can get away with that shit. Mm. So Robin is like, honestly, I don't want anything from her as far as an apology. Clearly she thinks that I plotted on her husband and I would advise if you really feel that way to not be my friend. I don't care. And Mia's like, well, as the first chair, I would like to say, <laughs> I think Robin needs self-accountability from Candace on her end. And I think Candace is looking for some transparency from Robin on her end. And I'm looking for a strap that's not made of mesh because this really <laughs> does feel awkward on my shoulder. And I would, if you can't find a mesh strap, I would also be open to just some, a few brochures I can move from the left to the right, just like the old days. So basically, neither one of them are, are going to do this, right? Neither Candace or Robin are going to bend on this. So no. Andy's like, okay, I guess we'll try again later. Did no one hear my speech? <laughs> okay. So Robin goes into this thing, like basically saying her and Juan have been together 28 years. And people go through shit and they're going to thug it out because they're like each other's person. And she's like, you don't even know what Juan has been through. You all need to do a two hour special on Juan Dixon's life. It's so interesting. Robin, he won't even show up to do this. What, what yeah. are they going to give him a two hour special? No, Robin. Stop pitching, stop pitching your projects in the middle of you getting <laughs> fired. Okay. Let's not do that. So Andy's like, all right, wow, well, well, Karen, as the designated fence humper of the group this season, you have to found yourself caught in the middle. And while you gave it your all, I don't know what even that means, unfortunately, no amount of humping seems to bring back the love amongst friends. Who wrote this shit? All right, we need to work on this. This doesn't even have any rhymes or puns in it. You're just I saying mean, humping and fence all the time. Congratulations on having a birthday again. But it's like every year is the plot is Karen's birthday. Can we just stop? Yeah. You guys shoot at the same times every year. It's going to be our birthday every year. Okay. I'm bored. I'm bored of Karen's birthday. Officially bored of Karen's birthday. So he asked her if she had a facelift and she goes, oh, mm, I did a plane basically, Andy, which is I had a plane implanted into my body, which is actually, <laughs> I run on jet fuel now, Andy. So Yes. Well, you know, when I was uh, taking skydiving lessons with some eye candy in season two, it was really just to sort of get a good view of the plane and how I would feel about it in my teeth. Um, and I have to say, it's been a little challenging because the plane keeps trying to take off, but I have to close the hangar, which is why right now I must pause and go. <laughs> <laughs> and Ash is like, was it just your face or? And she goes, nothing on my body because I'm done with my body. You know what? My body is banging as it is. Not me and me is me and fancy fence. And I'm like, okay, geez. All right, Karen, circling back on you being the fence of the group, which let me just take a moment to quietly laugh to myself that you are still calling yourself a fence. <laughs> okay, we're back. Why do you think the group gets frustrated with you for remaining neutral? Um, I don't know. A bunch of more platitudes from Karen. Then we move into the um, pave segment where we found out uh, the women's history with uh, sexual abuse and stuff like that. And they talk about that a little bit. And then we move back to Giselle 
and Candace. <laughs> They're like, there was a very nice touching segment. Okay, let's fight some more, even though I hate fighting and that shouldn't be on a show about women, which I profit off of. Okay, so just now you blamed Candace for death threats that you received. Why did you choose not to confront her about that? Did you ever consider texting her and being like, this isn't even fun? And she's like, uh, well, no, I was told that she would be talked to. Told by who? May, um, maybe she meant by like production HR. or something. Like HR, the production was like, like oh, don't worry, you can come back. We're going to give Candace a talking to about calling you colorist on TV. So Candace is like, I want to know how it is my fault that people are crazy enough to threaten her life. Um, which, you know, on the one hand, it's true. Like you, like there are people who are totally unreasonable out there on the internet and like a celebrity should not be held accountable for that. But at the same time, you also know that if, there were, that if Candace were receiving death threats because of, I don't know, maybe something Robin said, Candace would say, and I was receiving death threats and you said nothing. You know, Candace would say that. Well, also inciting people to do it with the whole like. You're exactly. like this because she of is the color inciting. of my skin, right? So, and she was liking, she was liking tweets and everything. I don't think that Candace is fully like we like. You can't. People have to re be responsible for their own actions, but also like, there is a world. You know, we. Um, I feel like something that I feel like I've learned a lot over the past three or four years is uh, inciting things like violence. Uh, that's not good, and we should not be supporting that. Well, but she's not saying go go kill Giselle or any or threaten Giselle. And this argument could be made against Giselle too, because if Candace had gotten any threats for her husband being a skeeve who's trying to you know assault women or whatever, like I don't think I don't think we can blame I don't think we can blame Giselle for. I mean, I don't think we can blame Candace for all of the people coming after with death threats. Also, where are these death threats? Can I see? some evidence of these death threats because I feel like this is something on the housewives that has become a thing where people are like you they you sent them after me with death threats where are they I need to see proof of these death threats yes yeah. and by the way like if you're sending death threats to Giselle and her kids over this stupid show like you really have to get a life I'm sorry or you really shouldn't be sending death threats to anyone ever and just yeah. in life you shouldn't do that like if you think that's ever a good thing to do you have to re-examine your priorities um, but in this specific situation, um, you know, if you're doing this on behalf of Candace to, to ride hard for Candace, just know you're making actually Candace look worse here, uh, because you've now put Candace in a situation where she has to defend your stupid actions when she had nothing to do with your stupid actions. But that being said, Candace is liking things, whatever. It's not a good look. And like, I think that they're like, it's, it's not black and white. But, like, you should not be liking tweets that say things like, you know, kill Giselle. I don't know if that was the tweet that she liked. But, but they know. didn't show any evidence of that. I mean, they were saying it with their words, but whatever tweets they were putting up there weren't death threats or anything like, we should we should all go kill Giselle, and she liked it. They were nothing mm -hmm. like that. Now, Candace isn't known for really being nice on Twitter, <laughs> and, she, and she does call Giselle a colorist constantly, but... I don't know that she can be blamed for death threats and also it's housewives. So I don't know. I just, I feel like Giselle is accusing Candace of being overdramatic, but at, at the same time, she's fighting fire with that same overdramatic fire where she's like, and now Candace has got people ready to murder me. No, I mean, you did some, something super shitty. So address that instead of the right. repercussions of it. I would like to hear her address what she actually did and admit she's wrong in any way, shape or form, which she never does. She still never does. She turns it into, I'm the victim here because people have given me death threats. Well, it's not Candace's fault that people on the internet are fucking crazy, so. Well, and Candace goes, well, you know, everyone up here has received a form of a death threat in some way, okay? And I think it's dangerous and extremely unfair to conflate me having an issue with her, with her then receiving death threats. I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, you may not be the cause of the death threats. You may not have said, go send death threats, but those death threats didn't come because they liked, because they hated Giselle's, you know, house, right? So Giselle, so Giselle's, they're, they're getting into this about it. And so now Candace goes to reach for another poster board. And he's like, ah, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you this. The people who are tweeting this stuff to her, are you liking the tweets and thumbs-upping these, these tweets? And she goes, 
I've liked some of the tweets. Yes, I've liked some of them. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, so that does involve you. So then the tweet they show says, break it down and sound it out. Candace, a dark-skinned black woman, said that Giselle, a light-skinned black woman, has privilege due to her proximity to whiteness. What does she mean by that? If Candace had made similar claims, it would be taken as seriously. I don't know. I didn't write the whole thing As down. Giselle's. Yeah. Um, but that's not a death threat. So it, of course, if she yeah, likes a, a that, seems like that a, of course that she's seems gonna like, like that because it's repeating what Candace says on the show all the time, which is Giselle can get away with certain things because of her proximity to white. Like of course, that, she's by the way, that tweet like seems that. like a perfectly like well written like thoughtful I think tweet, so too. like so where someone was contemplating you know potential hypocrisy of a situation. So I don't know why that would be put up on screen as an example of Candace like inflaming like. Like not inflaming, but like encouraging trolls. <laughs> it seems right. like someone wrote like something. I was like, "Hey, you should consider this situation. There could be hypocrisy afoot." And she was like, "I like that." Yeah. So, <laughs> Giselle's like, "It's incessant, week after week after week after week." And Candace is like, "Well, it's no different than her going on her podcast and talking about me." And Giselle's like, "Oh, please, we've talked about them one time because it was stuff that was in the blogs." I don't believe that. Now, I'm not willing to do the dirty work of actually listening to that podcast because that sounds like a lot of work, but uh, I don't believe that she's never talked about Candace on her podcast except for once. Really? Do you think so? Uh, I don't, I really don't know. I really don't know. Someone could, someone can let us know. So Bueller Candace does not believe. Look, Bueller <laughs> says no. So Candace is like, you know, laughing and joking and adding sauce to a lie, to a rumor. So then Robin goes, oh, so the screenshots are photoshopped. So I don't know what screenshots you're talking about. The screenshots of your husband's limp penis. I don't care. And it looks like she got Candace on this, right? Because Candace is like, oh, I doesn't speak back. And you're like, oh my God, they got her with limp, limp penis pictures? What's happening? Now, I think what they're talking about is that lady who said that she got pregnant because she was in, having an affair with Chris Bassett and then Chris made her get a miscarriage or made her get a miscarriage. What a fucking moron. Made her get an abortion or something. And that she had the receipts to prove it, which I don't know how she would have receipts that someone forced her to get. Anyway, the whole thing was nuts. And then she came out with another tweet saying that was all made up. Chris never did that. I'm sorry. And so people were like, well, was she paid to say that? Like, what's happening, you know? But it looks like the lady was just kind of a nutcase and wanted attention. And so I'm surprised that they're still bringing it up on the reunion and didn't bring that part up. Yeah, they didn't give a lot of context to this, but they did show enough to show that this, the, whoever this was seemed to be a very unreliable source, you know? So uh, Mia's like, eh, she didn't have all her marbles. That is a first first seat observation, by the way. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. The view from the first seat is marbles short. So uh, Karen's like, well, the bottom line is she said she lied, and I'm sorry. And we are above anyone that would lie on any of us, okay? So Wendy's like, um, all I heard was limp dick, limp dick, limp dick. <laughs> That's all I'm hearing over here. All right, well, I want to move on. Okay, okay, let's go on. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have a break in fifteen minutes, and I just want to see if we can get somewhere with Candace and Giselle as a possible, as impossible as that may be. So Candace is like, Andy, I honestly, I have seen and heard enough. We started the reunion, and you charged us with being honest and being open and doing what we could to move forward. And she has expressed through her actions and her words that she is not interested in moving forward. I don't think that is in anyone's best interest to hash out anything more with her. Yeah. So uh, Mia's like, um, I don't think she said that. I mean, from the first chair, that's not what I heard. My hearing could be different <laughs> over here. And just, I was like, well, what I said was a laundry list of things. And then we see a flashback to 10 minutes ago, Giselle listing off all the things she's been called on the internet, which, I mean, I don't know. I guess so we Andy's need to like, re that since we just did it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> well, here we go again. Andy's like, okay, well, it seems like you both have said a lot, but is there just like, something one thing that you both can be accountable here to present to the others so giselle uh says sure uh i was informed last reunion so already that's not a very accountable way of saying something like um uh you know and i hate that we're rehashing this again nah but that you uh did not like the sneaky link comment and i apologize for it i was like that is the worst way to take accountability what you should have said was well last year 
you know, I realized that, you know, in my effort to sort of be a little fun, add a little sauce to it, I said the sneaky link thing, and it really came off sounding like I was accusing him of something much worse than I was. And I feel terrible because I think that really uh, impacted both like our interactions and could have really sullied his reputation in a way that I was not intending. I just wanted to point out that, you know, Chris was doing some, you know, Ashley perceived Chris doing something sketchy. And then I said, you know, it's funny because I had a moment that I thought was like a little sketchy and that was it. But by me trying to be kind of a little funny or whatever, I brought it to a new place. And I apologize for that. Like, that's what you were, that's what she should have said. But instead she was like, oh, I heard you didn't like when I said that. So I apologize for it. I was just like, how are even a simple, terrible? Even a simple I'm sorry would be better than all that horse shit that she just spewed out. I mean, that was crazy. So, um, uh, next, uh, Clean from As You Go says, it's triggering to watch a woman who accused somebody of sexual assault speaking on sexual assault, talking about the PAVE event. Mm -hmm. And um, Andy is saying, I thought it was sad that you made a powerful moment about your issue with Giselle, who never accused your husband of you know, sexual assault about, you know, that you use that at such an important event, basically. And Giselle goes, Fatsa! And Giselle goes, but she did accuse him of sexual assault multiple times. Okay. Now, here not. I go flip-flopping in. She technically no. didn't. I mean, Candace just takes she it didn't. too far. I mean, I wish she could just say she insinuated that there was sexual she insinuated that he she he forced her into a room and all of this stuff the insinuations were there but she was he did accuse her of sexual assault which right I think which hurts is, her case not even though i'm does. on her side on this one it does because she because giselle did not do that giselle absolutely did not do that i think giselle giselle was being like cheeky in a way that was not appropriate and you know she tried she sort of suggested he was being um, you know, like handsy or electric, like for Michael Darby ish. <laughs> and, you know, and so Candace rightfully was like, don't put that, like, do not put my husband in the Michael Darby category. He is not like that. But that's very different than, than saying that, that Giselle was like, he sexually assaulted me. That's like a very serious, well, serious thing. My say. opinion has always been that Giselle used sexual assault language. She used coded language to get people to come after Chris in a certain way, right? So I think that that accusation is true. But to say, like, she accused him of sexual assault is, like, one step too far. It's, like, just when you're so mad that you exaggerate a tiny thing that kind mm -hmm. of hurts your whole overall point, I guess is what I'm saying. And then Candace is like, she said, quote, he made me go into a hotel room. And Giselle's like, he did, I did not say that. And then, um, clip of her saying it. Exactly <laughs> that. Oh, it exactly like that. Giselle. <laughs> but here's really what makes me crazy. They show this. the, they show the clip to us, but Andy doesn't say you did though. Well, does he say it? I think maybe he does say I th it. I thought he does. I think he did say it. Yeah. I, I don't know. We're not there yet. It's sort of, it still takes a moment to come up. So um, Andy is like, well, Wendy, in a court of law, is that considered sexual assault? And she's like, well, NECA is the lawyer. Uh, do you even watch this show, uh, Andy? Fucking Andy. <laughs> He's like, I was looking at degrees. I was looking at degrees. Yeah, and she has a different degree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted to say, um, if we're not going to do that, then... Um, as a family therapist, Wendy, what do you have to say? I'm not a family therapist either, Andy. Okay, as someone who's really into facials, Wendy, that's Wobbin, actually. <laughs> do even know that I'm on the show, Andy. <laughs> so NECA, who I don't think she does this sort of law anyway, by the way, she's like, mm, I don't think it amounts to sexual assault, no. Um, so then Mia's like, well, he didn't touch her. He didn't say anything inappropriate. And then Candace is like accusing my husband of forcing her into a hotel room. And this is where Giselle again is like, I never said he forced me. And I never said it. I never said it. I never said it. And Candace like, let me say this. I would like, I would, let me have the last say in this as a fence. The fence would like to talk. Okay. We can wrap this up because we need to be respectful of the survivors. Absolutely. And she says that basically words do matter. And um, they should pay attention to that. So Giselle's like, I didn't say Lord, I didn't say forced, I didn't say anything like that, which, I mean, she did. And Karen's like, well, you know, the words are not actually sexual assault, but, like, I understand where you're coming from. And Giselle says, I said he asked me, period. And Candace is saying, well, you implied sexual assault. And she goes, no, I didn't. 
So um, Karen's like, but you know, it's the fact she says it's not the implication; it's the fact that people are left to draw their own conclusion, which is the implication. So I right. don't know, Karen. Be quiet. <laughs> Karen, this She's is riding not your the thing. fence on implication. Karen, this is not your fight. Yes. Hmm. So so Giselle's insisting that she said that Chris asked her to go to the room, and um, Neca is like, but Giselle, can you say right here? that Chris did not sexually assault you, like maybe that will make her happy, which I don't, I'm shocked, I'm shocked that then Giselle didn't just say absolutely, and she didn't say that, but she goes, no, what I've said, and what I've said was that the man asked me, asked me to go into the room. So Candace is like, well, I don't wanna hear what you think you said. And she goes, and I said he made me uncomfortable. And Candace is like, well, it's on tape, Giselle. So then there's some back and forth, like Giselle's saying, I never lie, blah, blah, blah. And Candace is calling her a liar, and then they're going at each other for this. And now Giselle's like, oh, so now it's name calling time? Oh, right, now it's name calling time? Liar, liar, name calling time? And so they're like, did she, so Candace says, did, she, did he force you into the room or not? And Giselle just keeps going, name calling time? Name calling time? So here we go. It's Ultimately. Just more yeah, and then ultimately Andy says, well, in an interview, but you did say made me, Andy, coming in very late in this to, to set I up I mean, the it's score. just going on forever. And then so Andy finally comes in with that. And Giselle denies it. And Andy's like, the producers are saying you did. And Giselle's like, no. So then they put it up on screen, Giselle saying, absolutely fucking saying that. Yeah, she literally says, um, last year uh, I told your husband to... I told you, your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me go into a bedroom and close the door. That is what happened. So she literally said, he made me go into a, into a room. So Wendy is saying, okay, Candace, if Giselle holds herself accountable, what are you willing to hold yourself accountable for? Like and subscribe. And, and he's like, thank <laughs> you. As a lawyer. Thank as you, a new Wendy, lawyer. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad I called on a botanist for this one. So, <laughs> I'm not a botanist either, Andy. Uh, so Candace is like, I can hold myself accountable for the response. It's like, ah, there we go. Accountability inspires accountability. When did you know that as an accountant? Uh, um. I think the appropriate response, no one, no one's going to take the responsibility that they should. The appropriate response is, I got pissed that Giselle accused my husband, used sexual assault allegations and trying to ruin my husband's life. And so maybe I went too fucking hard against her. Okay. If I went too hard, then okay. But it's not okay to do what she did. Okay. Yeah. It's shocking that they didn't have a, a sit down because I think like they could have really had actually a heart to heart where Giselle really said, listen, I got caught up in, I got caught up in but the, Giselle won't be even admit it at all. Even yeah, a little that's what bit. I'm saying. Like she should have Giselle, like, it's not cool that people are doing death threats to Giselle and her daughters. And it's not cool. And I understand, by the way, it was, it was a really mean thing when Candace was like, she said something about like, you used your, you know, your hysterectomy for a story and you're white looking, you know, this white looking, whatever. Like, I understand why Giselle was like offended to the core, just as I understand how Candace was offended to the core by what Giselle did. But Giselle was the one who started this. So Giselle, I think, should have sat down and said, I've done like a nice apology to Candace for over embellishing her side of the story. So then we see a flashback to Candace. Uh, exploding at Giselle at the reunion saying, you sit up here with your privileged white looking ass and you think you can say whatever the fuck you want and no one's gonna bat an eyelash. And so she says she apologizes for using those words to describe her. And I'm sorry that your children have de dealt with death threats. And Giselle says, but not randomly, not randomly. And she's like, okay, but I do not take responsibility for the death threats because we have all received them at the hands of things that each of us have said, but I am sorry that you got them. I mean, it's like, well, that's what we call in the first chair progress. Am I right, Care? And I, right, I want, I want, I want to point out that as someone in the first chair, I do receive a few more death threats than the rest of you. It's just the burden of being here. Most of them are from Gordon, though. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley is like very desperate to, um, like, to 
uh, dissolve the, the any conflict or tension. She's like, oh, it's a starting point. Yeah, we had a starting point. This is all this is all going really well. I was like, no, this is barely. This is not a starting point. These this is the most reluctant accountability. These women have just like given up a few morsels so that way they can claim that they were accountable. But this is absolutely nothing. Nothing has healed or helped. Yes. So that's where we. It's frustrating, you know. <laughs> so then um, I have to fast forward through a little bit of this because I can't. So uh, now they have to like say nice things about each other or something. So yeah. because he's like, Karen, you claim to be neutral. And she's like, well, for what's right. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and if something's wrong, then I'm not neutral. I'm not neutral. I'm an angry fence when I need to. <laughs> so it's like, well, you're always coming for Robin. What's that about? And um, she's like, you know, that's something Robin and I do very well with each other. So he's like, Robin, can you say three nice things about Karen? Well, no, she doesn't have to. No, this 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 fence received enough praise from its friends Chainlink, and uh, <laughs> just Chainlink. My best friend is Chainlink, so what hates um, me? Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, I, I I'm I'm in a rough place right now with Stone, but you know, so Karen, <laughs> sorry, and he's he like, prefers Come to on. be called a wall. <laughs> You're still a fence. Let's be honest. So Robin's like, oh, okay. Uh, Karen is witty. Uh, Karen looks great for 60 or 40 or 30 or 20. Whatever her age, she looks great. Um, and she's a great mother. There you go. I love that <laughs> they all do that. And she's a good mother. She's also given birth to people. So there's that. <laughs> she's, she's, she, I really respect how she keeps, um, a fax machine alive and well in her house and cordless phones. So now Karen has to do the same thing and she can't do it. And she's like, um, well, she's good friends with Giselle. That's true. Um, she's intelligent. So that's, she really is very, very intelligent. Very um, intelligent. Although the secret thing is that she's actually dumb as rocks, but only a dumb as rocks person would believe that they were intelligent. That's the irony of calling someone dumb intelligent. <laughs> She's not intelligent with color choices or fashion at all, really, in any way, or money. Mm. She doesn't make or intelligent choices, <laughs> nor does she have any sort of analytical capabilities, nor does she have any curiosity about the world around her, as evidenced by her frequent use of the words, I don't care. But aside from all that, she's very intelligent. <laughs> and she's very strategic. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. She goes, but overall, very nice, very nice person. To other people, not to me. And so Robin's <laughs> like, whoa, wait a minute. Then you tell me this. If your friend, someone that you had a good friendship with, took to social media and went on Watch What, Crap and Sli Watch what Happens Live and repeatedly told the world that you were in cahoots with other people to plot on her husband, would you be okay with that? It's like, oh, God. Robin. Well, that's been done to me, and I'm still smiling with each and every one of you and that stone, quote-unquote, wall. <laughs> and Robin, who has been trying to convince everybody that Karen's been cheating for literal years, goes, No, it's never been done to you. Shut up, you fucking hypocrite, Robin. Jesus. Well, it's, oh done. it's been done to me in another shape or form. I mean, my point is, you know, rise above it because my object is always going to bring the best of us to the viewing audience. My, I just want the best of all you ladies for the viewing audience. That's why I'm here. By the way, did you hear that Mia was sleeping around with a rapper? Did I already mention that? I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> so now Robin's trying to come for Karen and uh, Karen's like I'm not on trial here Robin you are she's like she's not able she can't look at things objectively with me <laughs> oh okay I'm sorry Robin I have because I have a problem with the one minute you're putting a, a boom box on the table I love Karen <laughs> Karen describing a bluetooth speaker as a boom box it was a it was a First, next thing I know, you're typing at your compact computer. Next thing, you're putting a boombox on the table. And next thing I know, here comes a big band to get your point <laughs> across, right in the center of the table. <laughs> that Wurlitzer really had something to say that day, didn't he? <laughs> and then next minute, you're calling my name out on Andy Cohen's program to tell your, your story, but then you're sitting on the side of a curb crying and wanting me to take care of you, Robin. There's chicken shit bingo to den do. What do I have to say, Robin? And Robin's like, see, you don't hump the fence when it comes to me. <laughs> and she's like, well, you've got to give me something to work off, right? 
people. I'm not. I'm not a fence who I can am, just improvise good qualities in other people. All right. She goes. I am the fence. I will work with you. Come to the fence. The fence is here for you. Let the fence do things for you. But you have to work with the fence. Come on now. Oh gosh. So Karen's like, can uh, she goes? Yes, there's a picket fence. But had you come to my farm, the girls would tell you I built an 80 foot fence, eight feet high. Because I am the fence. <laughs> what? Karen's getting so lost in her metaphor. <laughs> really? <laughs> this whole fence thing, she is just stuck with it the whole season as she just keeps on going. <laughs> it's the strangest thing we've ever seen on The Housewives. Someone <laughs> so then insisting they that they're a fence. Yes. So they break for lunch. And then Mia is in her, in her dressing room. And she's on FaceTime with Ink. And um, Gordon's there. And she goes, yeah. oh, Gordon's here. Say hi, Gordon. And Gordon's like, oh, hey, what's up, man? What the hell? Yeah. And Ink is like, hey, you got that black going on? He's like, yeah, got to represent. <laughs> All right, well, I love you, Ink. I'll call you later. Bye. I'll see me in the first seat. Bye. I love you. He's like, love you more. Love you. <laughs> Gordon's right there. Oh my so gosh. bizarre. So then they move, they go back to stage and start the ink conversation. And Mia said that she got a penthouse apartment in Washington, okay? And it's very small, but she's happy. And that's all that matters. And where's Gordon living? He's got an apartment in Charlotte, but he is going to be moving right across the street in his own condo. All right, well, that's strange. So let's talk about Mr. Ink. You two were high school sweethearts, so why'd you break up? And he's like, well, he went to Atlanta because he wanted to pursue his career in radio, and I wasn't willing to leave my job because I knew it would lead me to a first seat someday. And at the time, I was still in school, and then eventually the distance like took its toll. By the way, why are you telling this story like it's the notebook or something like that? You know, you guys were in high school, and then you graduated high school, and you went in two different directions. It happens to, like, 99% of most people in life. Hmm. Um, so has she been in touch with Ink the whole time she's been with Gordon? And she's like, well, here and there, but nothing serious. There was only one mm, occasion that we did talk, talk. And uh, she was with G. And Wendy's like, uh, Mia, can I say something about that? And I'm just telling you this full disclosure because I know who Gordon is talking to and what Gordon is saying. But one of the things that Gordon said was that Ink came to your house and was trying to take away your, your son because he's the father. Whoa! Does Ink think Jeremiah is his son? And Karen goes, girl, I am done. This fence has just been blown over. I'm on the ground. <laughs> You can hump me all you want. This hump is this. We've officially goes. gone too far for this fence. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and he goes, yes, he does. He does think that Jeremiah is his. And he's like, he does. And Hash goes, still? Goes, yeah. Ink thinks that Jeremiah is his. Did you get that for the, for the trailer? Okay, great. Why does he think that, Mia? Because you told him. That's why. <laughs> what the fuck? Mia is so crazy. I'm loving Mia, and also I would like to credit us both with saying in the very beginning Mia was amazing casting, <laughs> because I feel like everybody's like, fuck Mia, she's, not everybody, but a lot of people are like, why is Mia even still on this show? This is why, okay, Yeah. this is why. You just knew, you just had to know, looking at Mia, there was something like this there, you know? How mad is Mia that she hadn't, hadn't started a uh, burner account to make fun of her castmates? Because she's sort of, she's a little bit on like a monarch tra uh, trajectory in terms of a mess, you know? How do you mean? In a, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's way better than Monica. I mean, Monica, I think, would have outlasted all the stuff that ended up happening at the end of the season had she had all of this going on, you know? Well, I think Mia's a little bit more savvy than Monica is. Like, Mia knows when to hit the gas and went to hit the brakes and monica was just all gas and not went over the cliff yeah so anyway uh thank you all for listening that was the end of part one of this reunion uh thanks for listening um and uh we've got a whole week of recaps so make sure you are subscribed on whatever platform you're listening to us on and we are going to catch you on the next episode bye, bye everyone everybody.